The University of Johannesburg has recently released a new documentary that shows some of the hazards of COVID-19 lockdowns on the poorest of the poor globally called COVID on the breadline. In collaboration with Picturing Health, the research shows that the poor face starvation and disease under shutdowns in developing countries. The, the half an hour long film also explores the implications and severe measures the pandemic has on those living on destitution. And to tell us more about this project we are joined via Skype by Professor Alex Broadbent from the University of Johannesburg. Professor, a very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Welcome. Good morning. Thank you very much. Tell us more about what the COVID-19 on the Breadline documentary is all about. Well, this is a really a documentary that aims to give a voice to the least, vo to, the, to the voiceless of the world about how it, the lockdown affects them and what it means for them. The idea really behind it or what emerges is that Locking down has very severe consequences, uh, health consequences, malnutrition, uh, reduction of uh, resources for uh, other health services uh, in very poor countries for very poor people. And this uh, makes it less obvious that it's the right thing to do in those settings. You compare it to a place like Europe, nobody's going to starve to death in most European countries as a result of a cessation of economic activity. And much of Africa... Uh, it's quite possible that they will. Let's talk about the impact that the, the severe lockdown measures have on those living in poverty in the developing world. And there's millions of them who live on a hand-to-mouth basis and in, in as much as the government has, uh, you know, has come up with plans of helping those people. But uh, it won't be any time soon. I mean, they need to go out there and uh, get food on the table. Yeah, this realization is growing. I think when uh, when I first wrote a piece about this, it was actually just before we went into lockdown. At that stage, it somehow wasn't being discussed. I think increasingly around the world, uh, as, but particularly in developing regions, we're seeing that you know the economy is not just something that the rich profit by. It's something that the poor actually live on. If you're working hand to mouth, if you're one of the 90 percent of uh, the African workforce that is in casual sector, in the, the informal sector, with no benefits, nothing to fall back on, and with a large number of dependents. Uh, it's not clear that you can stop working. And many people see the other threats to their life as far more serious than COVID-19. And probably correctly, if you consider the, the, the median age on this continent is 18. I mean, mm. one and a half million under fives have died already so far this year, out of the five million that die annually from pneumonia, which is also the COVID-19 killer in many cases, malaria, uh, and childbirth. So it's not at all clear that, that COVID-19 poses the same threats here. And it's not at all clear that we can do the same thing as has happened in other places. And that's the concern really that we have, that that perspective uh, wasn't covered in the World Health Organization's guidelines and, and simply wasn't, wasn't thought through. And I understand that the research has found that the poor face starvation and disease under lockdown in those developing countries. Yes, it's no surprise. What's interesting about the documentary is that we hear it from those people. Uh, it's striking how this has been a very top-down narrative. It's dominated by uh, scientific communities in, 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 uh, in, in the West, although not all of them. I mean, Sweden is an interesting exception there. And they have a very strong epidemiological community. Mm. Uh, it's dominated by the risk profile in the West, where 20% of people in Europe are over 65, compared to 3% uh, in Africa. And Although people under that age can get serious COVID-19, it's very clear that there is a very, very strong uh, increase in risk above that. Um, and it's it's context where really the only infectious disease in Europe it, that, that's threatened anybody seriously for a long time is COVID-19. That's just not true here. We have malaria. Um, uh, we have outbreaks of all kinds of diseases. Uh, people die of sepsis every year. Um, it, it's... It, 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 it's the it's tuberculosis. I mean, you know, this is one among many. And the, 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 what seems to be happening is that we are shifting the death toll, the mortality burden from older, wealthier people in more developed regions, which is mostly where they're found, to younger people in developing regions, specifically to children who are particularly at risk of malnutrition and of the diseases that come with that, and are very unlikely, uh, based on all the evidence we have, to develop serious complications of COVID-19. You know, Professor, the research uh, for this project was led by yourself and Tom Gibb from Picturing Health. Now, take yes. us through the process of gathering information and the facts for this documentary. Well, obviously, it wasn't possible to go anywhere. Um, what, we, what we did have and what, uh, what Tom has uh, 
from years of working in the region is a network of people uh, in different uh, in different places. We have community organizers in Malawi. We have community organizers in Uganda, although that that one was actually stuck in Glasgow, but still had good contacts. Um, and these people were able to go out and in some cases do filming on cell phones, uh, in other cases speak to community leaders um, and uh, uh, really gather some information and some voices from people on the ground. Uh, and then, of course, there is lots of footage which really just needs to be put in one place of, uh, you know, mass migrations in India uh, and so forth. You know, we're seeing the uh, we're seeing ministers now urging people in South Africa not to move out of the cities towards the countryside. But really, what are they supposed to do? I mean, at least as one of our interviewees says, at least if you're in the countryside, you can do a bit of farming, you can grow some vegetables to eat. Uh, that's just not a reality in the Soweto or Alexandra. So it's not surprising people move to the countryside. And that's the last thing you want. Now, in, now in Professor, a... do you feel that uh, this study or this documentary has been somewhat compromised uh, with regards to the content and the quality because of the mobility constraints, the fact that you are not allowed to go anywhere? Do you feel that some points or some information has been left out as a result of this? I don't think information has been left out. I mean, I do think that mobility restrictions probably are sensible. That's one of the things that we actually think is reasonable. Uh, I, 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 so I don't think, I mean, obviously the quality of the filming suffers if you have interviews over Zoom and Skype, okay. but in a way that just underscores the point. Um, the information uh, is, is actually quite, uh, quite striking. And so far as I know, it's really the only uh, uh, documentary that has specifically tried to chronicle what people uh, uh, who otherwise have no voice can uh, see this, you know, how they see it. You know, people who are not members of what you might call the communicating classes, who aren't on Twitter, who don't have data. Right. Um, so I, I'm, I'm actually quite pleased that we've at least managed to do some of that. All right, Professor, great chatting to you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was Professor Alex Broadbent. We've been discussing their new project, a documentary that uh, essentially chronicles the hazards of COVID-19 lockdowns for global poor titled COVID on the breadline.